It's time for new, 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 new. You timed it with the compressor uh, here that we have. Okay. Okay. It's time for compressor new. Yeah. So, uh, all right, we got some new products this week. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. That's Here's, always good. Here you go. Power cable. Yeah. Power cable. Actually, you know, we had a couple of these left over from a previous product we sold. And so we're like, well, we'll just toss them in the store. So if you want to pick up some high quality IEC cables, I'm sure you have a bunch of them, but maybe you need some more. We has them. So uh, okay. check it out. All right. Let's keep moving. Uh, this is a pretty handy little device. It is a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack connector that you solder to. We have a version with terminal blocks, but this is nice because you can make a more permanent connection. Uh, there's two tabs, one for the center and one for the outer ground. It's 5.5 millimeter outer diameter, 2.1 millimeter inner diameter. It fits like 99.9% .9 of power plugs. Mm -hmm. So if you're making your own power thingy, this is uh, a pretty handy little bugger to get. So okay. check that out. I'm always looking to make more permanent connections. Yeah? Um, yeah. So uh, here's a case. This is the Mod My Pi Raspberry Pi case. And I can show this on the overhead too once we get to the photos. It's a lovely little translucent-y case. It is designed for the Pi Zero. It's, you know, it's been around long enough we're finally getting injection molded cases out. So <laughs> on the overhead, got this so it's got a couple things going for it um it's got this um sd card protector which is a little tough to remove but once you remove it you can um take this apart and then if your pie has um these uh connections on them the um the 2x20 tr uh, terminal not terminal um idc connector you can pop this out I'm not very i don't have a tool with me but mm -hmm. there you can just press or we actually it? you want to try it yeah what is this it you just pop it out by permanently does it yeah come yeah up? it's fine it comes out permanently once you do it well i don't want to do that because i don't know i don't want to do that i need a little tool yeah to we need right. a little tool well whatever we'll, we'll just pretend okay until i can get screwdriver maybe in a moment um but yeah you can pop this out and then this will um fit over it but then just to practice it yeah you can just fit things like this and it snaps in very nicely and securely and then this would fit on top very nicely as well. Okay. So kind of like that. And then you can protect the SD card if you like by snapping this and you get access to HDMI and the um, two um, micro USB connectors. And on this side, there's a slot for the camera cable. So yeah. it's a nice accessory for your Raspberry Pi. Okay. That's cool. That's the case. Cool. All right. Next up. Um, there's this pack thing. Yeah, this pack is for, uh, there's actually a, a couple classrooms that were contact, cat, contacting it's us. Like in a book the, pack or something. It's like a little book pack for um, like making things, Blink or something, I don't remember yeah. the name of it, but basically it's um, conductive. conductive ink. Yeah. Or making like, uh, not conductive, it could, using the um, conductive tape. Yeah. And then making little. Which works really good. Which works really yeah, great, yeah, yeah. but actually better than conductive By ink. the way. Yeah. And it's conductive. The idea of the conductive ink is way better than yeah, conductive ink. So this tape, yeah. yeah, this tape, like, trust me. This is really good. Yeah. And you can tape it over the battery because it's conductive. The, yeah. the glue on the conductive tape is also, on the copper tape is conductive. Yeah. So you can make, you know, first off, of course, you can make throwies with this if you want, but you can also make uh, little paper lanterns and projects. Um, so this is for that book, which I can't remember the name of it, but check out the product page. Yeah. And uh, you can build up to 10 projects with two LEDs a piece. Okay. Uh, speaking of books, here is a new book we're stalking. It's Practical Electronics for Inventors by mm. Paul Schertz and Simon Monk. How is it possible that Simon Bunk Monk writes every book? He writes every book about everything right now. He is- He's writing a lot of books. This is an yeah. update. This is, um, I think, uh, edition three or edition four. Yeah. We've carried this for it's a really bit. Popular. But uh, there's a new version and we're just carrying it. Check it out. Yeah. Um, if you're wondering what it covers, it covers the following. Covers ready? cover. It covers resistors, capacitors, inductors, transformers, diodes, tri transistors, and integrated circuits. Uh, Optoelectronic solar cells and photoresistors, sensor, GPS modules, touch sensor, up amps, regulators, power supplies, digital electronics, LCD displays, logic gates, microcontrollers, prototype platforms, combination and sequential programming logic, DC motors, RC service, stepper motors, microphones, audio amps, and speakers, module electronics, and prototypes. So kind of everything. It's a, it's a great book, and it's a lot of people love this book. Yeah. So we just have an update. There's some book pages. And I think they just have some more modern stuff. They probably cover more of the Very latest generous. microcontrollers yeah. and all that good stuff, the latest sensors and components <coughs> that are available yeah. to you. That's right. Okay, next up. I'm really excited about this. So uh, we worked with Damien, who is the creator of MicroPython, 
And this is the uh, this is a cute little snake logo. They have a new logo too, but this is this is a cute one. So we have a micro this python one's the cutest. <laughs> sticker. And uh, here's something we're really proud of. What? Uh, we are supporting Damien, the creator of MicroPython, and his efforts via money. Money. And we also Money's additionally good. will donate a dollar every time someone gets a MicroPython sticker. He gets a dollar yeah. to continue his open source work. Because I'm going to complain just for a second. Are you going to complain about I'm gonna something? I'm going to complain for a second. That's the best. Yeah. Get so, to it. Uh, here's what I'm going to complain about. What do you hate? Well, <laughs> I, I'm just going to I'm just going to say something that I think everybody should consider. Okay. So um, in our description on the the product page for the uh, Python sticker. Yeah. Um, we say this is how we're supporting Damien. We've already uh, sponsored and, and and sent him a thank you. And then there's more coming for every uh, sticker that comes out. But one of the things that it seems fair is if you call something MicroPython, it should be open source. And what we're starting to see is there's companies that are taking the work that Damien did that's called MicroPython, which is open source, and then deciding to take it away and close it and still call it MicroPython. Lame. Which is not okay. Not okay. It is like, it is kind of like calling something Linux. But it's closed source. But it's closed source. Which, which you can't do because GPL, but if like BSD, like if you made something, if you made your own, like fill BSD and you didn't open source it, people would be like, what the it, heck? It is, it, a little, it is a little odd for anyone that calls something MicroPython, but it's not open source. You can't do as much with Wait, it. but I want to make sure. Is what about the MicroPython stuff we're working on? That is open source. We open sourced it. Yeah. Could you go right now and like look at the source code we did? Yes. And it's all under an open source license. Yes. Whew. So you're not talking about us. That's good. No. Good. There's somebody else. No. And we say this on video about things, and so someone could roll the tape one day, and anything we do with MicroPython is going to be open source. Of course. End of story. So I'm just saying, if someone's going to make hardware and say it's MicroPython, maybe also make it um, open source. Anyways, I'm complaining. And now that was I'm, a pretty I'm good rant. Yeah, okay. But wait, Cables. wait, did you want to show the sticker over there? Oh, yeah, we'll show the sticker on the over Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's such a cute sticker. Okay, so first off, this is a gigantic sticker, and yeah. it's adorable. Look at these oh, eyes. You know what? My laptop yeah. has a billion e stickers. Do you want to put it on your well, laptop? I'll, I'll do that, is yeah. Is it that time? Yeah, well, see my laptop here? Yeah, but it need, what it needs is a snake. Yeah. Snack. Yeah. Where do you want to put it? No, I'll find a spot. We'll for find it. a spot. Okay, anyways, these are very great stickers. And yes, $1 of every purchase goes to Damien. So this is a great way if you're doing a MicroPython workshop or you just want to support, yeah. uh, Damien, toss a sticker into your order yeah. and uh, you'll give him cold hard cash, which will help pay for the, the core development of MicroPython. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to port Python to a tiny microcontroller? It's impossible. It's not impossible. We've done it. <laughs> We're porting it to the at Sam. Well, no, what Damien did. Like the, oh, what he did yeah. to start? Yes, that's That was impossible. impossible. <laughs> that was impossible. It was so impossible that actually... Um, he had to bend space and time. Yeah. He's a physicist, and so uh, he probably had to go to like the event horizon to get even more time than necessary, and yeah. make, like slow down time and also expand space yeah. so they could fit MicroPython into. He a worked small. on the cos cosmological constant and the cosmic background radiation an analysis. Anyways, yeah. um, here is uh, one of my favorite new products. These are alligator clips with the little uh, breadboard things. Darn! Isn't this the most handy thing in the world if you are connecting? A thing that is not breadboard friendly to a breadboard, this is what you want to use. These are alligator clips that have yeah, jumpers this. on the back. So for circuit for. playground projects, for example, or Flora or Gemma, or even just like everyday just Every weird project. stuff you're connecting, like, you know, ITO or, um, you know, that conductive copper tape and stuff. You know, it's not breadboard friendly, but if you want to connect to a breadboard, this is great stuff. So it's a little alligator clip and a breadboard plug at the end, and it works with every breadboard, every perf board, every solderless, every, every, every Arduino. You can even use it to connect something like an Arduino to a sensor that maybe has wires on it or something that isn't very breadboard friendly. So super handy. It comes in a pack of 12. Uh, they're not too long. I got them kind of short so that you don't have a crazy wires everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a close up to this too. Yeah. That's a nice connector. Just plug it right in premium style. And I got those little mini clips. So they're nice and small. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Boop. Okay, this is, actually this is a product we've sold for a while, but we never sold it alone. So this is the Character LCD Backpack. This is a really old product, you can tell, because it's got an 1890 
uh, USB 162, which we haven't used in anything else, but we did it back when that was a chip that people used. Uh, it was in the Teensy 1.0, and it's got a mini USB connector, but this is a, a USB serial backpack that you can use with character LCDs, worked with, uh, you know, you solder on the back of the LCD, and now you have yeah, a uh, USB connection, so really handy for just adding a serial, you know, uh, USB serial display onto any, you know, um, computer. You can use it with like LCD Smarty and other things to create little displays. We can, you know, use it also with um, uh, RX UART pins. So if you have a microcontroller, yeah. you don't want to spend six pins to do the bit banging to control your HD 77 whatever chipset LCD. You can just send it commands and yeah. it uses the standard matrix orbital command set and we also added a couple commands for controlling the rgb backlight so you can get full color backlight so yeah. now we have this as a separate board for people who have their own lcds or whatnot i figured it's a good idea to toss it into the shop yeah. so okay it's an old product but now it's live the start of the show this week beside you is this yay finally we have another new product for this week this is the drv 8833 this is a motor driver. What's nice about this motor driver is it has built-in current control. So it's a chopper circuit, and uh, we limit it to one amp, but you can adjust the current limiting as necessary. And that's about what this um, motor driver likes to run, one, one amp, maybe one and a half amps. And uh, it has uh, two H bridges. So you can control uh, two DC motors bi-directionally or one stepper motor back and forth however you like, and this is just a demo showing it with an Arduino. But what's nice about this chip is uh, not only does it have the current control, so it's good for when you're driving um, motors and chips that may have high current draw, and so you want to internally current limit them. This will do that without the risk of damaging the chip. It also is really good for low voltage chips. So this uh, driver runs from 2.7 volts to about 11 volts. And most of the drivers that we've used go from about like seven or eight to 15. So for higher voltage devices, you have know, 12 volt motors, nine volt motors, you'll probably wanna use like the TB6612 or something. But if you're using a three volt motor, and there are a lot of devices that have uh, low voltage motors, like, um, you know, like hobby DC motors are often lower voltages, or if you want to have current limiting, uh, this is a pretty nice, Stepper DC motor driver. Yeah. And I can have it have a little you have demo. demo? Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. demo. Yeah, sure. So this is just with a Metro, and this is with a, uh, a stepper motor just showing it spinning around. I got a little flag so you can see it spinning. And uh, works with, again, a stepper motor or two DC motors, and you use four pins to control it, one for each side of the H bridge so you get it's very manual control you literally just toggle the pins as necessary and then you can PWM the pins as, w as well if you want to do um, micro stepping on a stepper motor or if you want to use speed control for your uh, DC motor okay okay all right and with that lady lovely is round 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 the product, the product's over. yay okay